Spire version 3.10 has been released with a greatly enhanced bank reconciliation procedure, customer-specific inventory part numbers for sales orders, multiple EFT format support for different banks, and more. When you edit an account and open the reconciliation process, instead of immediately opening the transaction list, you are now first presented with a new account reconciliations list. You can see the sequence of reconciliations as often as they have been performed. From here, you can also view previously posted reconciliations to see specific details, and even print reconciliation reports that match the output as it was when first posted. When you create or edit the reconciliation with an open status, there are some new changes. The opening balance value is no longer editable and will contain the closing balance value from the previous reconciliation. This provides a proper connection from one reconciliation to the next. There is also a new memo field to enter a description or label to this reconciliation, to note a purpose or anything else desired to include on the reconciliation report. The bank statement end date still suppresses any transactions in Spire with a date later than this. But in case there is a transaction that cleared the bank prior to the end date, there is a new Show All button that will unsuppress records with later dates on the reconciliation screen. If a transaction appears on your bank statement that has not yet been posted in Spire, you can still use the Create Transaction process to enter and post it. But for typical bank transactions, there is a new Add Bank Fees button to more easily create these transactions not only for bank fees, but also for interest paid, or earned, or credit card charges. As part of the setup, new company settings to assign special accounts related to each transaction type are required, so that when you post a transaction for a specified amount, both debit and credit accounts are known. Importing downloaded bank statements also has some new enhancements. After you have browsed for and imported the bank file, not only are transactions matched if amounts are the same and within 14 days of each other, but are also matched if the check or document numbers are the same, even if they are outside the 14-day limit. This will increase the number of matches and reduce the amount of manual work for those not automatically matched. Both Create Transaction and Add Bank Fee buttons are now also available on the Import screen in addition to the main reconciliation screen. You just need to highlight the imported bank transaction on the left, choose the respective transaction type from the button, and the date, description, and amount are automatically assigned. Then you just need to post from here, and the match is immediately linked. If you have a large volume of transactions to match, it is now easier to locate and manually match those not done automatically by using the Hide Match button to suppress those records already matched and show only those that are remaining. For consistency and to prevent mistakes, it is no longer possible to select transactions on both sides with different amounts and select them to be matched. You will need to make appropriate corrections to the Spire posted transaction and ensure the amounts are the same prior to matching them. And if you need to go back and forth between the import and main reconciliation screens, you can close and then reopen the import screen with all previous matching remembered and remaining imported bank records displayed on the left. Note that the imported information is not remembered if you close or refresh the main reconciliation screen. Whether you reconcile your transactions manually or through importing, there is a new option in company settings to prevent posting if variance value is not zero meaning the sum of the selected transactions does not equal the difference between the opening and closing balances. This would ensure a proper sequence from one reconciliation to the next. If you enable this new option, you still will be warned about this scenario, but you can continue with posting. When the variance is zero, and you post the reconciliation, when it is successful, you can print the report as usual, and this reconciliation will be closed. And if you need to make corrections to mistakes in a posted reconciliation, this is also changed. In previous versions of Spire, 
you would use the Show Reconciled button to reveal clear transactions, to select and reverse. This would cause inconsistency in balances. Therefore, you now edit the posted reconciliation, and instead of Show Reconciled, which the button has been removed, you instead use the Cancel button to reverse the entire run. Then you can redo it with the needed corrections. You can cancel the current reconciliation and immediately create a new one with the same balances using the Correct option from the Cancel button, so that you can start entering the correct reconciliation. If the mistake is not in the most recently posted reconciliation, you have to cancel all reconciliations back to the one with a mistake in order to keep the opening and closing balances consistent. In previous versions of Spire, it was possible to create a sort of workaround for maintaining customer-specific part numbers through price matrix records. In this release, there is a much more comprehensive way for entering and using special customer part numbers. When you edit a customer, there is a new tab for customer part numbers where you can find this list. The standard Spire grid features to filter or search for or export records is here. Create a new customer part number or edit an existing one. For each customer part number, you select the inventory part number and warehouse. If this item supports multiple units of measure, you also choose which one belongs here. It is possible to create customer part numbers for the same inventory item but different units. Then enter the value that the customer uses for this part. You cannot create multiple records that use the same customer part number. If you have a large number of customer part numbers to enter, the import tool has a template available to bring them all in, so you don't have to create them all individually. When it comes time to enter a sales order for this customer, you can enter the full customer part number and press the tab key to insert this item. Entering only a portion of this part number does not include the item in the selection list. Once added, the customer part number value is stored on the detail so that you can print it on any forms sent back to the customer. If you use the Spire part number to locate and enter an item onto an order that has a customer part number value for this customer, the special part number is only populated if a company setting to resolve customer part number is enabled. You may see a short pause in adding the item if you use this feature, depending on how many inventory items you maintain. Spire now supports configuring EFT settings on separate General Ledger bank accounts, instead of the previous way from company settings. This allows you the choice to generate EFT transactions from different banks when you pay your vendors, or different currencies for EFT receivables or payables or payroll time cards. The first time you use this new version, the bank information will be moved to the Ledger bank account set in special accounts for the consolidated division if you use separate divisions. When you edit a GL account, if the bank account option is enabled to specify that this is used for banking, then an EFT settings tab will be visible. The area at the left is where you add or maintain the EFT file format as was previously found in company settings, choosing from four possible formats, including a US ACH format. When you highlight a format, the settings are displayed to the right, including the next file sequence number. EFT processing in accounts receivable or payroll time cards has not changed significantly. When you generate the file through posting or exporting, you are still connected to the bank and clearing accounts specified in company settings special accounts. But now you are presented with a new screen to show this account with the available EFT settings to select from, and the date used for processing for the EFT upload file. EFT processing in accounts payable continues to have a little more flexibility. By default, choosing EFT as the payment method still selects the EFT deposits account as defined in company settings, or you can set the specific bank account if you want each check to be counted for separately in the bank. When you post an EFT batch and confirm the payments, 
you also can select the EFT setting and processing date for the desired EFT file. Or if instead of posting directly to the bank account, you use the EFT clearing account instead, when you post the batch and confirm the payments, you can choose from any bank account that has EFT settings assigned, along with the desired EFT format and processing date. If you would like more information about Spire Accounting, access the link in the description below to our homepage. Read the online manual help for additional assistance. Watch more videos from this playlist. And subscribe to the Spire YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.